Today I am going to tell about the famous novel of Intermediate Goodbye Mr. Chips. This novel was written in 18 days by James Hilton. Before discussing about the novel, I am going to tell about Mr. James Hilton and the inspiration of him. How did he write this novel? He was born at September 9, 1900 at Lee, UK and died at California on December 20, 1954. His spouse name was Alice Brown and the father of James Hilton was a headmaster at Chapel in School where James Hilton used to study. The name of his father is John Hilton. It was published first time at USA June 1934 and at UK on October 1934. Now I am going to tell about where James Hilton used to study. First of all at Chapel in School from 1915 to 18 and after that he went to the lay school where his teacher was Mr. Bergani. He was not only teacher at lay school but also he was the in charge of the lay fortnightly. It was a magazine. James Hilton reports that the inspiration of Goodbye Mr. Chips came from many sources including his father John Hilton and his teacher Mr. Balgarni. Both of them were the personalities James Hilton was inspired. Mr. Balgarni was a strict disciplinarian but he would also invite the boys to visit him for tea and biscuits. James Hilton wrote that the death of Mr. Belgarni pushed him to write something on his favorite teacher's life. As I have told you that Mr. Belgarni was the in charge of the late fortnightly a magazine of that school where James Hilton used to write his short stories and now after the death he also struck that the fact that Mr. Belgarni was the miracle of to inspire me on the way to write this novel. He further says that the mutton chops inside whiskers of teacher of a teacher at the lays earned him the nickname Chops and inspiration to the name of Mr. Chips. Now there is a detailed summary of Goodbye Mr. Chips. Goodbye Mr. Chips by James Hilton tells the story of Mr. Chipping, nicknamed Mr. Chips. Unenthusiastically teaches the Dutch languages of ancient Greek and Latin. Privately, he feels that learning these languages is rather meaningless, but nonetheless goes through the emotions. He is not a very good disciplinarian and in fact is somewhat intimated by the student body. Mr. Chips lives at the school and has very little personal pleasure in his life. Chips has never felt comfortable around women. His ideal woman is delicate, weak and timid. When he is 48 years old, he and a school colleague take a summer vacation on a lake in the area while on a hike up a rocky hill a young woman is waving in his direction he thinks that she is in trail and starts to rush to her and however he gets his foot stuck between the rocks and the woman winds up coming to his aid the woman is 25 years old Catherine Bridges who helps Mr. Chips hobble back to his room she checks in on him during his recovery and soon the two fall in love and marry before the next semester at Brookfield begins. Catherine is the antipathy of Chip's ideal woman. She is strong, optionated and politically liberal. Catherine's observative personality and speech awakens the real Mr. Chips who was there all along. She teaches him to think independently speak his mind, love and share joy and most of all to have fun and love and love. 
tragically Catherine dies in childbirth in the year after they marry. The child she was attempting to deliver died that some days as well. Chips is in the throes of depression over his loss. But by trapping Catherine's spirit and outlook, he is able to carry on. Chips begins to relax and enjoy himself and ultimately discovers he has another true love that is the one for his students. Chips is inspired by Catherine's spirit, often relegating the curriculum to a lesser importance than exploring the humor of a situation or person. Mr. Chips becomes the most popular teacher at Brookfield. After he retires, he moves in across the street so he can stay in close contact with the students, making a special effort to meet the newly arriving students each year. He is asked to come back and help at school because the staff has been depleted by the demands of World War I. When the young headmaster tells Chips that Chips belongs up at Brookfield and is needed to hold them all together, he is overcome with emotion. Chips faces further tragedy with the loss of many of his students who are killed in the war in his final years. He spends much time reflecting about his life and career. On his deathbed, he hears a comment from one of the one of his colleagues that it was a pity he never had children. He corrects the person. He has had children, thousands and thousands of them. As he shuts his eyes. For the final time, he is comforted by thoughts of his beloved students. In my next video, I'm going to tell about the characterization used in this beautiful novel, Goodbye Mr. Jesus. So keep watching language in. Thank you so much.